Here we are, rained out on customs. How you doing, Dan? Hey, hello, Ryan. I don't see you. I am I in am. the very corner of a, a, a junkyard by a train track. Okay, do you, are, uh, do you know where Cuppers is? I, I know where it is when I see it. Okay. I will come around then. I am spawned right by Big Cuppers. Big Red Warehouse, is that close? Um, are you on the construction site where the sniper is or no? I don't think so. I'm, I'm at trains. Is that you? Is that you? I'm no, I'm looting behind a dumpster right now. That's not you. Okay. So okay. I, I have a PMC near me. Were there just some guns going off? Yes. That's at me. I'm probably going to die. It's not, it's worth not scavs. It's a group of PMCs actually. I hear a lot of popcorn going they're, they're actually, they did like a, a coordinated flanking maneuver. Are you dead? Yes. Okay. Oh, I will. You should run to the shots. I am running to take, the shots. Take them out as they loot my, uh, my four 9mm magazines. So you, you were on the other side of the isthmus then? Sounds I like. Have, I don't know customs at all. Oh, you don't? I I, you no, I don't, know, I don't know anything about customs. Oh... Uh. Which My is why question I, think, you... I think we should institute uh, a policy of no loot till we're together. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where if you would have told me that before, I'd be like, eh, but now in hindsight, I get it. I've I mentioned it on, on some of our runs in Team Unity to begin with, but I, th I think whenever I'm like, three of us are together and Malf's like, hold on a second, there's a weapons case over here. I'm like... We could all... I don't mind you getting the weapons case. I would just like four of us to be together before we have somebody loot. Well, I think I spotted him. There's a dude in the toque and a dude in some uh, ski goggles. I got the mouth. Yeah, drop him. And the guy in the hat got me. Or the guy in the helmet got me. But at I, least I got the mouth. In yeah. The I'm pretty sure they were uh, like squatted scabs as well. That was a little bizarre because, I mean, normally we'll spawn within, like, a baseball's throw of each other. But this one, I mean, we, I couldn't even hit you with the three wood. Yeah. That's how far apart we were. I mean, it, it would be helpful if I knew customs. All I know, I know factory, obviously, and then I know interchange. Everything else, I'm like, basically, I have to rely on the kindness of strangers. I, I do feel like customs, what are you going in with? Um, I mean, I'm, you, I know you're, you're a little thrifty right now. Just take in whatever... <laughs> uh, like, dude, honestly, start with a pistol, and um, we'll we'll find a scav, and then we'll dust the scav, and uh, you can play take a little gun. gun game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't, dude. Honestly, like, I'm not gonna be sore if I lose anything in my inventory. If anything, it just gives me extra space. <laughs> All right, I'm in custody. I, so, do, uh, I do need to just clear out my backpack real quick. There is a character I'm a little concerned in the queue right now called Dark Hunter underscore NL. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming so, uh, they're just Dutch. Mm, I hope so. I, I, otherwise, they wouldn't know that I'm playing Tarkov right now anyway. I mean, not unless you're in Discord where it tells you what game you're playing. Well, if they this. have me in a Discord, something's gone terribly wrong. Because <laughs> I, don't, I don't join Discords for games. <laughs> okay, oh. Customs should see me in a second here. But I, I was saying, I see you. Customs is probably one of the easier maps to learn. Yeah. Because there's like there's so many distinctive areas. Well, so, I know like uh, I know that the southwest corner is like the Home Depot sheds. Mm -hmm. And then if you walk north from there, it kind of looks like a, it looks like an Xbox controller, right? And the bottom left is like Home Depot, and then like near the face buttons would be the uh, new gas station. Like I, I have some idea so there. You got but, it. Well, not really, because like whenever I play, I look at the customs map and there's like twenty two X fills. <laughs> <laughs> it's just But all of them, most of them are just scab ones. One you of know, them is and, called Old Ass Gate. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But all right, let me ask this. Are you do you believe that there's three ways to learn? Like visual, uh, auditory, and like do with your hands or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I don't know. We learned that in school for sure, but I thought I had heard that that has been 
debunked, debunked or revised in one way or the other. What, do you feel like you have a propensity to learn in one way of those three stronger than the other, or no? I feel like everybody is like a a do learner. Meaning what? I, I feel like the best way to learn things is always going to be like to have experience actually executing it. Like mm -hmm. it's people like I had as a kid, I was like, oh, I'm a visual learner. Like I, I read text and then I know how to do something. And I'm like, I mean, that that was only because that's how we learned in school. I think that I had a bias towards thinking that that was how my best way to learn thing is. Uh, but then, like, you know, I always think about like driving a car. And I'm like, you could read the book as much as you want. You're not going to get comfortable until you've done it, uh, you know, a few hundred times. You sound like you, you, you're speaking from DAE programming experience. That's basically it, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of people, they they read a lot. Oh, man, you are. <laughs> <laughs> nice mag, though. <laughs> Thanks. Um, a lot uh, of people, they yeah. like read a bunch of code and they're like, or read a bunch of like. Let's go this way. Sorry. Okay. Read a bunch of tutorials, and then they try to write code, and they're like, I can't do it. And it's like, I feel like the best way to learn how to code is basically you learn, like, one thing. You learn, like, this is what a for loop is, and then you practice it, like, ten times. You're like, okay, I'm going to write a program that writes numbers from 0 to 20. I'm going to write a program that writes odd numbers from 0 to 20. You know, I'm going to write a program that prints out a random number 20 times. You know, you just, uh, you got to kind of, like ingrain that stuff in your head via repetition so how do you learn the first for loop then that's a oh, guy right in front yep, of us yep I'll, three I'll... two one nice i think, um, be I think careful. you this actually kind got of a him too. There. uh come inside this blue building if you mm, can okay. uh guard the door i'm gonna loot no problem that's you, i mean you do have to learn it once for sure but but then you got to put it in action. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I don't want to get too much into it, but you know, since having two children, you learn like, yeah. or you try to learn like, what's the way do you think is going to help your kid learn the best? And that, there's like a method called Montessori when it's just, just that, like you just do stuff and you kind of let them do what they want to do. Like you give them, Hey, here's three things you can do. And then whatever they do, you know, it, they're like have a propensity to do that or versus like sit there and read this book for 10 hours i don't know it's, it's interesting there's a lot of stuff to, to learn but from I find the, it to, can yeah. you go, can you go to like a montessori high school they, there's not many of them but there is one in michigan and really? kind of the way it's set up is you spend half the day like on a farm like doing stuff like uh you know whether working with cows and for like your biology and then you spend the other half of the day like learning how to take whatever you've created from the farm and i think they go to like farmers markets and stuff like that i'm really oh, glossing it over there's there's yeah. a dude i didn't mean to interrupt but there's a dude yeah. he's at uh red warehouse i think after you loot here we should bail out the same way we came okay let's go he, he shouldn't be able to see us i think if we make it out quick i actually like oop. yeah you know nice i job. i grew up as like uh you know, you're smart, you don't have to do anything with your hands. And I think it's <laughs> done me like a disservice uh, that I've like, I've constantly been like behind when it comes to actually, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, like real life skills of like, you know, how to use like a, a screwdriver and stuff like that. That's a pretty rudimentary example. But, you know, when it comes to like, you know, wood shop class and stuff like that, I got no idea. Because I, I feel like our education system does smart kids a disservice by constantly like immersing them in the theoretical instead of you know doing any hands-on like, work at all like the practical yeah yeah so i you know i don't know if i would want to work on a farm for four hours a day and then hawk melons at the farmer's market but i do think that <laughs> teaches you some valuable life skills you know that you don't get if you're like hey you're smart so we're gonna put you in uh, a class with other smart kids and you know you're, you're gonna learn about you know, just chemistry all day. Yeah. Well, that's a, like, you know, and you're, I mean, you're, I guess you're listening to two former teachers. And for me, I, I used to teach in a very, like, strong school, like a very strong academic school. And even walking away, I'm like, there's some really, there's a guy right at the ice cream shop. You see him, the scav? 
the I, left side of it? I don't, but if... Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I'm Three, ready. Two, one, fire. We must have oh, got, we got it. I, oh, to our right! Dropped him. I should, I'm down. I should have oh. waited. I got no armor. I mean, it's I got I got to play that a lot smarter. But I can uh, man in the chair. You yeah, for sure. hit me with some man in the chair and hit me with some more uh, parental dialogue. Yeah, yeah. Just so hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up. Uh... Yeah. Once you get that, I'll I'll find uh, my exfils. I'm just looting. I'm assuming you didn't have too much. No, I mean it's not even worth. It too. Okay. Uh, I I'm, I'm pulling up a custom map just for production value but so you know you're talking to two teachers and i don't know how you feel but for me like there were some really bright kids that weren't necessarily academically smart mm. but it i don't know I, I just feel like there's kids learn in so many different ways yeah yeah no i understand but like we continually just teach them in one traditional way all right cool so here is ryan i'm gonna bust out the old john man telestrator too so you are right at did you push up to that little ice cream shop? I'm at ice cream shop where we killed that guy, yeah. Okay, what are your exfils? My- Oh, I'm gonna die, actually. Uh, I don't think it's a scab. One second, I'm in a gunfight. Yeah, yeah. If I live, I will. I think it's a scab, actually. How are we doing health-wise? Lost a leg. Oh, he's right there! Peek me. Dropped him. <laughs> Yo, let's go. Oh, what's that? I, I need to heal, but my exfils are dorms. Oh, they uh, the one that doesn't have a question mark is ZB ten eleven. Okay, I'm dead. So <laughs> <laughs> it's hot, dude. That's a that's a hot zone, dude. I feel like factory customs the two hottest mix tracks in the game right now. I got dropped by TTV Thickwood. <laughs> shot me, shot me right through the nape of the neck. What's is what's the nape? Is that where like the the chicken thing is? I flat? think it's at the it's at the back, like where your uh, where like your skull meets your uh, your spine. Mm. I think. I think. What's your scab looking like? You have to ask. Pistol. Val. Oh, yo, I'll tell you what, it's, it used to be called Snoreline, but uh, if you want to play for an extended period of time, yeah, yeah, a little yeah. Snoreline. Let's do it. But I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, but the thing is, I don't know how you, I don't want to say fix, but improve the education system because ultimately it's a way to, I don't want to say wrangle kids, but you got to, you can't change it too drastically because you have to keep in mind there's what, how many kids were in your high school? Well, my graduating class was only 80, but <laughs> I grew up in a, a pretty small area. I don't know. It's just, I don't know how you fix it, but it, sometimes I feel like there's some really bright kids in school, and because it, they don't line up with how things are taught, you know, yeah, they yeah, get lost I, in the show. I mean, I feel that, uh, like, it, it, that, I don't know, I can't speak for the U.S., but I'm pretty sure they're similar. Like, here, I think that there's a little bit too much emphasis placed on, you know, being book smart. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, that was the category that I fell in, which was I mean, fine. But definitely, like, at, by the time I finished, even, like, my university education, I was, like, hands-on learning was, like, less than 1% of my lifetime education, probably. And I agree with you that, like, there were smart kids in my high school that were not book smart at all. And as a result, they kind of got washed into like the, the classes that are like, ah, you're just here. So you, uh, you know, basically as glorified daycare when they had talents yeah. that they should have been utilizing in other, uh, areas, but like our school didn't offer those opportunities. And you graduate with an education degree. No, uh, bachelor's of science. Honestly, you, you only need a bachelor's in anything to teach English in Korea. Okay, what about in Canada, though? Oh, definitely you need a Bachelor's of Education. Uh, is that a, always your plan, to do that? No, or you just... I was just like, I didn't know what to do after college. So I was like, I'll just take a year and, you know, earn a little bit of money. What did you out. think you were going to do with a... That's oh, is that you? Is yeah, that... yeah, yeah. Dude, what I... did you think you were going to do with a bio degree? Honestly, I had no idea. But, like, 
I, at high school, they were like, you know, you're applying for college. What do you want to apply for? I was like, I like biology. That's basically well, like, all it came down to. There's like maybe, you know, in, in the pure sciences like that, you basically like have to go back and get a master's at this point to work in the field if you want to mm-hmm. be able to make any headway. So I was like, I don't know, maybe I'll go a work in Korea for a year and then I'll study for my like um, my GRE. I don't know if they do that in the U.S., but the yeah, it's like yeah, a graduate exam. Yeah, yeah, and then you know if I score well on the GRE, I'll I'll apply for like master's programs and maybe get on like a, I don't know, a professorial track or something like that. So like, and you see some seem like someone to me who's very prudent. Like you're not just kind of like, hey, I'll wing it and see what happens. So when it came to select your major, yeah, it sounds like that's kind of how you were though. Just kind of you winged yeah, it. I mean, basically, yeah. That's why I, I feel like it's not necessarily meant to insult my high school but i feel like they didn't do an adequate job of preparing us like for what it meant to major in something like <laughs> it was basically just like hey what what's your favorite subject and like if they're if you're like hey what do you want to do for the next 40 years of your life you're like i don't really know they're like all right well you know you got a good math score how about you you know spend the rest of your life doing math stuff you know all right <laughs> Let's go. Let's check out Scav Island. But yeah, I will say yeah. this: if someone's, there's probably a good chance that someone's listening right now and be like, hey, "Yo, I don't know what I'm going to major in." Here's my best unsolicited advice: if you think you want to be an accountant, go through your Rolodex, your iPhone, ask your <laughs> Grant Tilly, ask them, "Hey, do we know anyone that's an accountant?" If yes, go spend six hours with them at their job. You'll know in six hours if you want to be an accountant. Yeah. And, dude, like, thank God there are people that actually enjoy that because, like, <laughs> I probably spend less than 30 hours a year doing accountant-based stuff. And it makes me want – every hour of it is, like, misery. It makes me want to die. All right. There's definitely a guy at Scab Island. Um, so he, I, have, I have Fal, yeah. and uh, you, you point him out. I'll sit him down. All right. So he is – in the when you cross Scab Island, the first barn on our left, the closest one, he was in front of there. Okay, I'm going to post up on Barge and then see okay. if I can long shot him. Yeah, I, I feel see like him. that should be... Okay. One sec. You oh. can take a shot. Take I'm, I'm going to when he stops moving. Did not drop him. Okay, he's I'm still, at the... Yeah, he's, he's at that barn. Okay. I'm at the other side of Barge as you, so I'm like Scav Island side. Yeah, I don't, I don't you know. Wait for you. I don't know where he went around that barn, but I do not see him anymore. I'm pretty All sure right. it's a Scav based on movement. Was that you? Yeah, I'm trying to hit him. Mm. I got him. Nice. All right. Um. But I, I feel like that should be part of. The graduation. Oh, there's another one. Oh, coming, coming, coming. All right, I'm back on the barge. <laughs> Hello. All right. So, see where I'm pointing right now? Yeah. He's on the back side of the island, right there. Okay. I'll let you get this one. I'm gonna push left side. Yeah, I see him. He does. I didn't know you could go off on this side. Me neither. Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> He's dead. All right, nice. I think uh, that might have been a player just, like, AFK. Ah. Uh, it was definitely surprising to see that guy all the way out there. Hold on. I'm going to sh- make sure there's no other scabs before we loot. You see him flapping around you? Oh, all your right. guy's in the tall grass. I didn't even see him. Your guy have anything good? Uh, He has a Vepper. Do you need it? Mm, nah, this guy had a vep too. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you. I mean, the most we had was like, you know, take your kid to work day. So it's like <laughs> better hope that like one of your parents has a job you're interested in. Otherwise, it's not really uh, not really that much of a boon for you, I think. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, I agree. That's why so I then, think like uh, yeah. like programming is so it, it's like open my eyes to other learning styles basically because of the fact that the only way to do it is to do by learning or by uh learn by doing i should say so like you know i i feel like now i've realized that that's actually an effective strategy for many people not just for uh the people who fell into that camp after doing like a quiz in eighth grade or something let me ask this do you 
What level of intellect do you think you have to have to be a programmer? I, if, if you have, like, not insanely below average, like, acumen for problem solving, I think you can learn how to program. And it's just a matter of just grinding. Here, you can open that gun box if um, you want it. Like this one? Yeah, yeah. I, th I mean, I think programmers have kind of done a disservice by making it seem like programming is difficult. I don't. I don't think it's not difficult, but it's. Uh, I don't think it's as difficult as people make it out to be all the time. So I can't hold one of the guns in this. You should. Uh, what about now? No, no, no. You should. You uh, still can't hold it. I still can't hold it. So PP Bison. Like I'm not gonna to, to program in like the '80s. You had to be one of the smartest people like in your state, probably. It's not. Why do you like, say that? Well, like, uh, basically now learning to program is, I mean, it's probably always going to be the easiest it's ever been, I guess, as time goes on. But, like, you don't have to write your own code editor just to be able to do anything. You don't, uh, like, when it comes to debugging, you don't have to run, you know, 100,000 punch cards through something the size <laughs> of your house. And then if you make a mistake, be like, okay, I guess we'll go through this one by one and see where the mistake is. Like... There's much more sophisticated tools now. I don't. Can you, and I don't know if you can. Can you give me a first grade explanation on how computers were run off punch cards? Dude, that I doesn't even make any sense. I have no idea. I all I can assume is that obviously the the punch card, the way that you punched it indicated it was like a signal for a value to the computer. So maybe you know if you punch like spots two and eight then it serves as like a number four or something for the computer. So it's got a series of those instructions inside of it. And then it, I don't know how it reads them, either by like passing a light or, or passing air through the punch card to determine which uh, which holes have actually been punched. That's that's all I got. Like, And then the mainframe would perform a function based on the holes in the card? I guess so, yeah. And I, I some of the some of the punch cards I suppose must have been operations, you know, like plus minus or multiply, et cetera, et cetera. Let me ask is this tell me if this is accurate to programming or not. Is programming just the management of anywhere between one and millions of variables? Yeah. I mean people if you wanna like get it down to brass tacks, basically what programming is is you take data, you do something to it. And then you present that data again. So, you know, if you think about, like, uh, I mean, a, a programming, a, a calculator is, like, a really easy example. You know, you take the input from the user, you do something to it, and then you spit out, like, the result. But even on, like, a, a broader level, like, you know, uh, trying to think, like, something that finds uh, prime numbers. Essentially, is just starting with some subset of data, like, known prime numbers. Oh. And then uh, you know performing operations and then spitting something out that's that's usable to the the programmer or the user. The, th the thing that bends my mind though is how does who programs the computer to know that one is actually one and two is actually two? Yeah, yeah, that I I honestly have no idea. When you get down to that, it's like it's wizardry for me, or like programming an operating system, like programming Windows or something like that, or even DOS. Makes no sense to me. But there are people watching this video who have definitely done it. Because it's like a common, like, senior level, uh, like, college end of term assignment. is like, you know, program your own operating system. Really? Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be as, uh -huh. as sophisticated as something like a modern Windows. But but it would have, like, instead of C colon, you may do whatever E asterisk and whatever. I mean, it, I don't even know. I yeah, can't even... That, that's oh. the thing. Guy looting right now. Well, is that a dead body or guy looting? You could take a shot if you want, because there was a gunfight here. That, well, he was looting. <laughs> Did you get him? Yeah, he was nice. just hunched over looting. It had to be a play or uh, maybe play or scat. Yeah, I mean, there was a huge gunfight over here. I think he's kidded. Oh, it's just a player scat. Oh, it was a player. Yo. <laughs> I mean, that's like, I don't want to say any kill in Tarkov is, um, uh, how do you say it? Like, non-chivalrous? What am I looking for? Dishonorable? Looking or... Dishonorable, <laughs> but the guy hunched over looting. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah. how many times has that been done to you, though? I know, right? Mm -hmm. So it goes both ways, that, I guess. That's how I killed Darth Vader. Check his, uh, check the scav he was looting. Do you have anything? Sorry, I just had to take my, uh, Melkman Ooh. mask. Uh, this, the scav has a Mosin next to him, if you're, if you're interested. I got I got full guns. I'll take his ammo. Yo, do you, you need that, uh, white armor for a quest? I just dropped it. I had it on my body. Yeah, you know what? I might as well. I'll wear it and then, uh... Hopefully I'll be able to give it to Skier. So speaking of Melkman, I may have the most ambitious Melkman oh. crossover of all time. I just spent uh, an hour and 40 minutes editing a, oh, well, that's you, an eight minute video uh, right before <laughs> we were doing. It's it's NBA playoffs crossed over with Super Melkman. That's, I don't even understand. What... Like, <laughs> Well, Friday videos are off and I load up in a factory with Kobe's. Yeah. So it takes on that context. But it's probably my finest meme work of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, I'm kind of kitted. Are you kind of kitted? I, dude, I'm kidding. I'm ready to go, honestly. Right, let's check these. I mean, what's what's your exfil? Uh, I have Road to Customs. You have that? I've got Lighthouse and R Wing Gym entrance. Oh, you're really close to yours. So. Yeah, Lighthouse is like right here, right? So this is where I need you to direct me at the force. My my force is telling me there's two safes in here. We each get one, and then we get out. Is okay. that greedy, or should we just? Get oh, out? it is greedy. Yeah, but let's do it. All right. Because if we die, then that saves us having to run to the exfil. <laughs> All right. There's yours right there. Oh, thank you. Don't forget about the computer. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's looted, I think. No, no. Oh, please, no loot. This, mine's not looted. Oh. Is yours? Uh, my, my safe was. My PC was not. Okay. There's a cord here, if you want it. <laughs> That's actually worth something. I would yeah, take it. I, I, I don't have space. I took a DVD player instead. All right. Have you found a USB drive yet? Uh, I have not, no. Many, so, like, USB chargers. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you'll see uh, a PC, and then you'll see it externally plugged in. If you see one of those, absolutely take it. Because it's really? like a, definitely a super rare spawn, or a rare ore spawn. All right, so I'm going to... You're gonna check that other. I don't. Uh, I don't know uh, where we are on the map. Okay. So I, as usual, I'm just running around. Here, come. Here, come back in here. Three of the greatest loot boxes in the game. Oh, right the now. the filing cabinets. Yeah. I mean, I this is where my greed starts to get tickled <laughs> a little bit because I I'm full. There's a you. Here's a key. Do you need a key? No, no I'm I'm, I'm keyed up. I, I got gas station key. Like, I know uh, this stuff is worth something, but I feel like you're, you know, if you get to the point where you're throwing out something worth 1500 to pick up something worth, uh... Okay, okay, okay. You, you see what I mean? I do, but I'm gonna be that guy and say sometimes you could pull a gold chain or a roller out of there, but let me, let me point you to your exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, so take this all the way down. Mm, and okay. you really only have one place to go. It's gonna take you to a tower. And then go up to the tower. And that's Lighthouse. Oh, see that thing right there? Looks like an oil rig. Uh, you're right, like really close. That tower. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, That's the lighthouse. Headliner. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then can't all be uh, like from Jason and the Argonauts. What's that? I, don't I mean, know. I know it's, what the uh, movie is with the claymation, but yeah, there's. Uh, I think uh, something goes wrong with the lighthouse, and uh, the uh -huh. Jason and the Argonauts get shipwrecked. Did you speaking of Jason and the Argonauts that? Did you watch the end of Jeopardy? Uh, I did not watch. Uh, I didn't watch like any of James's run, honestly. Maybe like an episode or two. What do you make of that? Do you think that's more or less common going to happen more in Jeopardy? Jeopardy is a game where if you are like an order of magnitude better than the people you're playing against, your odds of winning are like 90%. So I think, you know, it, it takes a very special kind of person to have the speed on the buzzer plus the strategy plus the trivial knowledge. But if you get all three of those, like, you will, you'll be almost impossible to beat. It's and definitely, it, he, like, you're very rarely are you going to have a situation. I mean, like, he, he didn't, it's not like he put on a bad performance. Like, he just, he just lost, you know. It happens, but... uh 
I think that, you know, realistically, he could have gone more or less infinitely. And, you know, how close did he get to Ken Jennings? Uh, I, th I think he was, like, his pace was way higher. Like, uh, the, the speed at which he was uh, getting money was way higher. But his actual, like, money total, I think, ended up being, uh, like, a few hundred thousand or even close to a million away. Oh, wow. So, I mean, you're talking, what, 10 to 20 episodes of Jeopardy away? Yeah, it probably would have been another uh, well, another few for sure. Probably probably another couple of weeks of uh, of wins. So, like, if the average Tarkov Rupal runs somewhere between 50 and 100,000 Rupals, is like an average run. What's an average Jeopardy run? Usually, like, between 20 and 30,000, I would say, if you, if you don't wow. have somebody like James on the show. Wow, I didn't know. I thought that... I didn't know it was even that much. Sometimes it's like, you know, people win with under 10,000. In very rare scenarios, people might win with like, you know, a dollar, but. All right. So. So what's what's the opposite of hubris? Humbleness? Uh, yeah. So putting aside your humbleness. Yeah. What is what do you believe? Your percentage chances of getting on Jeopardy, not not playing Switzerland and being humble. Like, what's the real number? Well, I don't know. I think uh, I guess I must have screwed up the online test. I thought I did pretty well, but uh, haven't gotten uh, an audition call. I think realistically, there's probably like a like a twenty five percent chance, which I would consider pretty optimistic. You know, if I okay. do well on like the next batch of online tests. My philosophy is like I got a really good chance if I get uh, a live audition. I agree. Yeah. I think you're a home run because the story is just—it's very unique. Yeah, well, and you're very presentable on camera. And I don't watch a ton of Jeopardy in my day, but my recollection of Jeopardy characters is like lukewarm tap water. Well, I mean that's like highly insulting. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> people aren't people aren't going on Jeopardy because they're characters. They're they're going on because they're smart. Not saying that smart people can't be good characters. I'm just saying you don't turn on Jeopardy and be like, yo, this dude is a wild character. <laughs> he's, he's he's breaking out one liners left and right. You're like, oh, well, it, you know, I don't want that out of Jeopardy either. When I watch Jeopardy and there's some guy who's like, you know, epic for the win, <laughs> I'm like, get this guy off the air. <laughs> I'm watching for the trivia. I'm not watching for you. I know, but imagine you, you got the trivia and you got a little panache. Maybe you you bring something a little new to Jeopardy. I think it's, well, you know, I think if I get uh, if I get a live audition, I got a good chance. But should I sell this golden G phone, by the way? Or I mean, you... if you want to, if you want to throw your one G's up in chat. Then... No, no offense, Summit. There you go. Uh oh. Yeah, that's, so, but... I, I think, realistically, I think I could get on the show and I would give myself like, I think I would give myself a one third chance to win like an episode. I think I'm I'm roughly the same trivial acumen as uh, as a average Jeopardy contestant. So have you? Cause I'm running to my exfil now. But have you thought about if and when you get cast, how you're gonna play it? Do you th are you gonna play it more like Ryan Gary or more like Northern Lion in terms of your presentation? On I'd the like show? I'd like to be just like a human being. <laughs> like myself not not a character i mean but you don't like, play you, you get to talk for like 30 seconds i know but are you gonna be tournament on fire or are you gonna be ryan oh, Gary absolutely the dude the, you you gotta watch more jeopardy the jeopardy community they, they hate a showboat unless it's earned if it's like you know ken jennings has won 15 episodes he's allowed to dab once but like <laughs> apart from that you People, and is myself included, when we watch the show, I just want a robot who's, like, you know, getting every question right. Yeah, but how do you know you want a robot if you've never seen someone flipping the buzzer around like they, they flip off? Oh, the, there's, the off. there's been characters in, really? <laughs> in Jeopardy history. And people, you know, anytime somebody distinguishes themselves in Jeopardy, people instantly are like, I don't know, they kind of rub me the wrong way a little bit. <laughs> So you're basically saying you need to know your role in Jeopardy and kind of yeah, just... I think so. I think it's a fair fair way to describe it. Well, no, I I meant no insult to those. Yo, the guy's name was Bread Ace, level twenty nine. I meant no insult to the people that play Jeopardy and maybe have a more subdued personality because I think we all have our own spot in life. Anyway, 
You ex I got out. Hey, yeah, you got out. Dude, we both got out. It happened. That's, it happened. That seriously helped my bottom line. And you know what? <laughs> I'm going to bring our next run. I'm going to bring you a knife. Dude, I, you know, that'll take me to 10. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the Tarkov episode with Ryan Geary and myself. If you did, uh, hitting like button helps out a great deal to quote Ryan Geary. And also check out multiple perspectives in the description below. And we will see you guys next time. Later. Later.